Okay, so we're doing the five shot challenge today. All that is is five rounds out of a muzzle loader as fast as you can. They did it with cartridges laid out on a table. We're gonna do it with cartridges and caps in our boxes and pouches as they would be carried. We got four different rifles, well, muskets. Uh, 1861 P53, a P61 Muscatoon, and an 1842 Springfield, which is a smooth bore. We'll be shooting round ball out of that. So we'll see how terrible this is. I would say I'm more, you're more like a new recruit when it comes to this. I don't shoot And much. I've shot more, so we'll see what kind of time difference that makes. Uh, the cartridge, we'll be using the terrible Burton Ball cartridge. We're doing a slightly modified um, US Regulation 1855 cartridge. So this is a 575 Burton Ball, not a 577 because that's not gonna fit in an Enfield. But it's 60 grains of powder with the rocket paper uh, inner tube. These are not great, but not terrible. I've actually never used an Enfield cartridge. So to me, these are just normal. The way this cartridge works is you bite it off and powder spills everywhere. You pour it, grab the bonnet, and you smack the powder tube off. So you see it separates it like that. Then at that point, you push the bonnet in. But as you can see, little grains of powder get on the side, and those just crunch all the way down the bore. It's a real, like right here, that last six inches, it's not happy. Ready? Ready. Go! Oh, fuck. That's loud. Ooh, that's hard. So short. It's gonna be tight as fuck. Powder? Yeah. That's concussive back here. Yeah, it's really bassy. This thing's fouled up pretty bad already. Doing really good. Please, please, bounce. I just drooled. Get the black powder drools. One minute, 51. Yeah, about the only issues I really ran into. I mean, there's la the fourth and fifth round ran into some issues with midway down and you'll get some powder caught right around the, the uh, crown of the muzzle. And to get that started, it's a little bit of a pain in the ass with this short of a rod. Um, but still, otherwise, that was not. I got problems with the short rod. Too. Yeah, yeah, I got <laughs> short rod problems. I don't know how that's possible. So we have or four hits. To show me. One here. here. Pulled him beer. One here. Now one here. And that was my last shot that I, that I said I pulled to the left. Begin. Almost reached for my cat box. Tank fire. That's spicy. I know why you said it was uh, percussive.
modern shooting grip. <laughs> Not all that powder went in. Half the time it doesn't. This one's gonna be weak. One thirty-eight, thirty-two. That last one, I, I was pouring it and I held it for like a couple seconds like I usually do. And I went and grabbed the Manet and smacked the cardboard tube and I just saw powder fly everywhere. Yeah. That I was like 20 grains in there maybe. Okay, so I think uh, we know what's wrong with the P53. The two hits on the paper are keyholing. They're hitting sideways. So uh, maybe it really doesn't like Burton balls. I don't know. <laughs> that explains why we couldn't zero it. Yeah. We're gonna do it with cartridges and caps in our boxes and pouches as they would be carried. Begin. Spicy. Get the fuck down there. Number four, right? Yep. One. I stopped it a little late, but you were at 208, probably right on the dot. That's not great. <laughs> no, but that was still pretty quick. Here's the 1861 run. Ready. Ready? Ready. Go! <laughs> oh, you fuck. Thank you.
This is four, isn't it? Yep. Oh, great. Three oh three. I thought the cap fell off. <laughs> it was the uh, the cover. Is it hard to knock the cap off with the way that it's shielded? Yeah, I had a couple of them that were a little tight. Yeah. My worst part was I I the so the paper cartridges would keep folding over, so I couldn't get the powder to come all the way out. All the end. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, here goes the eighteen forty two Springfield smooth bore. Ready. Begin. Must have had a bad sprue on that musket ball. your fourth round. Final round. I don't think I trimmed the sprues on those musket balls well. I just say they look tight. So the sprues were sticking out and dragging the whole way. They looked really tight compared to the other ones. Go! Jesus age Christ, it's so tiny. <laughs> ah. Ah. Oh God, Jesus. 
That's fucking filthy. Not that again. Hit lower edge, aim dead on. Dead on? Yeah, we'll try that. Got it. This thing is so tiny. You gotta like bend over. Dead center. Good. Is this the fourth? Yep. This muzzle crown is so fucking sharp. No. Last round. Two thirty four. Thirty seconds faster than the eighteen sixty one. Okay, so we finished that and surprisingly really good results. I'm yeah. surprised how fast it was when you had the cartridges laid out. And we're not I mean I shoot maybe a hundred rounds a year in gear. You've shot nothing not, this year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not for an entire year, so not bad. So we'll go ahead and talk about it, how each one went. Um, so actually, this one kind of surprised me, um, the P61 Musketoon. I, I originally thought this would be a nightmare to load. Uh, it surprisingly wasn't that bad. Um, the only gripe with this was it's just short and awkward. It's very awkward to use uh, when you're going through the loading cycle. Um, I think with all of these, there was an issue with the Burton ball cartridges, like the paper cartridges. When you pour powder in, you can get some powder stuck around the rim. And it's really hard to start the uh, the projectile. Yeah, there there is a tube that separates the powder charge from the Manet, but once you tear it with your teeth, it just gets everywhere. In your mouth, mostly. Yeah. Um, so the second rifle was the 1861 Springfield. Um, this did surprisingly well today. Uh, we were shooting 5.75s. 5.75s. Today, yeah. and it, it shoots a lot better. I think we were shooting oversized uh, Manets yeah. through this. So th this was designed and will take a .577, which is the original 1855 cartridge. Nightmare. But yeah, 5.75s, just that's what was used in the Civil War because, you know, they had end fields and things of smaller bores out there that wouldn't take the 5.77. So uh, this thing was actually pretty good. I, I, my only gripe is, I mean, you get a little bit of fouling towards the, uh, the breach of the rifle. Um, around your third or fourth shot, same issue here. You get some powder build up and it's really a nightmare to start the ball. Other than that, those both shot very well today. Yeah. Now the uh, Enfield, oh boy, <laughs> had some problems. Um, so with 65 grains of powder and 575 Burtons, this used to shoot fine, just really high. Today it started keyholing and I don't know, I don't, I don't think five grains of powder is going to do that. But it was keyholing and it was fouling really bad in that last bit of the chamber. So I didn't do too hot with this. And um, yeah, we were trying to zero it. And now we know because of the keyholing, that's why we couldn't really get a good zero on mm -hmm. it. So, I mean, it did fine with speed uh, with the Burton bullets, of course. Um, the rammer's very nice on this. You can just drop it in. And this is actually an original rammer because I broke the repro one. Um, 1842 Springfield, it's great as always. You can shoot anything out of it. 
Uh, no rear sight, so I think I had zero hits at 100 yards. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, so, I don't think you got down low enough on it. To, you got to get yeah. low like you do with the, the infield on this one, just to get that sight picture. Yeah, I mean, I usually shoot this at 50 or 60, um, and it's, yeah, to, to your rear sight, your sight picture on this, I kind of use the tang as a reference, and you really got to smash your head, and yeah, I was forgetting to do that. I was kind of just coming up, and my front sight was floating up there, plus this band has the sight, and it's loose and wobbly. I should have shot buck and ball. That would have been... But buck and ball is kind of a pain to load, because you got that buck shot fucking around, hitting the edge of the barrel. Yeah, I'd say we did pretty good with everything. Um, we only shot the P61 and the P53 Enfield with the rounds sitting on the, the bench. We didn't shoot these other ones like that. But, I mean, I imagine the Springfield would be about the same. Right. But it's a fun challenge, and it's a really good practice in your gear. Mm -hmm. You know, figuring out exactly how high up you want things, trimming some of the fuzz so you can actually get your damn caps. Yeah, that... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I might lose one or two if I lay prone, but these repro patch or cap boxes if you don't trim them you're not getting a yeah, cap out of you it. can't even get your fingers in between it so yeah burton bullet is still okay adequate surprisingly it's adequate what they needed in the civil war something quick and easy like everyone always comments why why not enfield cartridges why not enfield cartridges well the confederacy used them and they liked them so much they adopted them three times because they would try to adopt it and be like oh this is complicated oh we can't get the right paper Oh, we're not building these right. And they just went back to the Burton time and time and again. So, you know, they probably wanted it, but... Plus, if, you, if you're not the British and you don't have a school of musketry for all your soldiers, you kind of just need a bullet that they can load, like, one or two a minute. Yep. You know, they're not... Yeah, three, three rounds a minute if you're a drilled British soldier in, like, Crimea. But as a Civil War soldier where you were a factory worker or a farmer and now all of a sudden... This is in your hand, and you've, I don't know, shot a flintlock three or four times in your life. And now you, now you have this. Like, we, you and I combined have received more live fire practice than probably an entire Union company in 1861. Yeah. So, there's some, I think there's some validity to that. Yeah. So, the Civil War is a different animal. That's why I bent this framer again. Just the tip and only the tip. Mine Impossible challenge. Something. Don't bend a repro 1842 rammer. But yeah, it's pretty fun. That's better. Good enough.